Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're with us this morning. Closing out another week of time in the Word and looking at the verse of the day. But let us make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. You may have seen in, in an email yesterday, I did a devotion with my kids in the morning, and they, they're learning how to embrace their faith. And so Gemma does forehead, tummy, side across, forehead, tummy, side across. And she's trying to be funny, but she's also learning it. And so the, uh, these are all things that are, are part of our faith. They enrich our faith if we know what they mean. And so we, we try to embrace those things and revisit them uh, somewhat frequently. Because for some people, it might be the first time. And even for us being reminded, it's, it's refreshing to know that we don't do these things in vain. There's a purpose. And they're from Scripture and so today, let's dig into Scripture to see what else we can learn about this faith that embraces us and that which we believe. If you pull out your Version Bible app, the verse of the day is John chapter 5, verse 24. This is Jesus speaking. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. This is where our faith is quite robust. Matthew, Mark, and Luke spend more time talking about the narrative of the story, but John is giving us a lot more theology He's giving us more understanding of the complexity of our relationship with God. He teaches more in, in these images of how we relate to God. Jesus is the light of the world, things like that. They seem more like a metaphor, but we're getting a better grasp of what's going on. So in this verse, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words, so... Faith comes from hearing. Paul picks up on this. Paul says faith comes from hearing the words of Christ. But this is, this is from Jesus. John, John and Paul are picking up what Jesus has said about how you come to faith. Jesus says here, John chapter 5, verse 24, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, believes the Heavenly Father, does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. So this is, this is quite helpful. The scriptures speak of two different resurrections, two of them. Resurrection does take place now. People pass from death to life now. They pass from the death of infidelity to the life of faith. They pass from the death of, of falsehood to the life of truth. They pass from the death of iniquity and sin to the life of righteousness. So the Lord Jesus was willing to make it known to us that there is a resurrection of the dead now before the resurrection of the dead at the end times. So he's speaking of a faith resurrection, a spirit resurrection. The promise of this life comes from hearing the Son and believing the Father's promise who sent Jesus. So this promise becomes immediately effective. The hearer and the believer 
has eternal life now. It's just not realized. It's like if you get a voucher for free dessert at a restaurant. You have the dessert. You have the, the, the goods. It's paid for. But it's not fully realized yet until the Sunday hits your lips or the cake or whatever the dessert is. And judgment is no more than for us. So he's put judgment behind us, not in front of us. It's no longer in front of us. It's now in the rear window. And judgment is only for unbelief. Because we cross into this eternal life relationship with God now, even while we're still in this world. It's a, it's a complex idea. It's a challenging idea. But it's greatly comforting. It's greatly comforting knowing that we rest in this eternal life now. We've been resurrected from this death that is inevitable. Sin leads to death, always. Unless there is a state of belief from hearing Jesus and believing the Father. This is, this is comforting to the believer. This is not a text that you would maybe give to a new believer or someone that's struggling in their faith. If you were to ask me which gospel would you give to an, a new believer, I'd probably say Mark, but Matthew or Luke before John. John is so robust in his theology that it's comforting to the believer, but it's challenging to the new believer or to the unbeliever. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the places to learn the story. John is where you go to learn the benefits of what you have in believing Christ and God's promises to you. So resting in these promises, let us pray in thanksgiving to God that we ourselves have passed from death into life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we believe in the one that you sent. We have heard the promises that you have made in his name and what he has done for us. Help us to cling to these truths, knowing that we have eternal life now in his name. And invigorated and excited by this new lease on life, Help us to be vigilant and steadfast in sharing this wonderful news with those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May you rest in the knowledge that you have resurrection now and will have it along with all the saints in the time to come. And furthermore, be excited and invigorated to share this good news with the world around us. Have a wonderful weekend. I look forward to seeing you right here for worship on Sunday morning at 9.30, and then next week we'll pick up our Live for Five devotionals once again. Have a wonderful weekend in the name of Christ.